Welcome to Week 6 NFL Power Rankings with the Bearded Maniac. Now, I didn't know quite the format to take here. I tried scrolling through teams once, took way too long. So we're going to make this nice, short, quick. Leave a like, subscribe if you agree with any of this, or comment if you don't agree with anything, and let me know where you would rank everyone else, in your opinion. At number, at number, we're going to start from the bottom here. At number 32, we have the Cleveland Browns. Awful. Kaiser's getting benched for Kevin Hogan. That's the only thing I got for that spot right there. 31, New York Giants. No Odell for the rest of the year. No Brandon Marshall for the rest of the year. Eli struggling. Best bet, honestly, for the Giants. Trade him to the Jacksonville Jaguars for an early draft pick. And try to get a nice quarterback next year. Because it's, it's possible in free agency they could sign Kirk Cousins. So if you have Kirk Cousins at quarterback with Odell and Ingram and Shepard on the offense, that offense could be dangerous. And Eli could really help out Jacksonville, but I think the Giants are done. They're, they are, like, the the Giants and Browns are both candidates of the 0-16. 49ers I have at number 30. They did move up a spot over the Giants, mainly because I liked their showing this week. Their offense played pretty well, considering... Brian Hoyer threw for, I think, 300 yards again. And um, Carlos Hyde got benched. That's what concerns me there. The Chargers squeaked out a win against the Giants, but I, so I bumped them up to 29th. But, like I said with the Giants, they lost, like, everyone. So I don't know quite what that says about the Chargers until they face a quality team and win. At number 20, we had the Bears. Mitch Trubisky made his first start, played decent, but then just played also just made some bad mistakes. The Bears defense got tore apart. And it kind of sucks. I Hopefully Trubisky does improve because he is one of my favorite rookie quarterbacks of the last few years. At number 27 we have the Arizona Cardinals. Why are they down so low? Mainly their offensive line is just so terrible. And they have no good options at running back. They did just trade for Adrian Peterson, but until he proves he's better than what he was in New Orleans, I'm not going to bump him up because of Adrian Peterson's past reputation because that has nothing to do with what he's done now. Nothing. At 26, we have the Colts who have moved up to. I like the, so far, I like the performance of Jacoby Brissett. He's been playing quite well. No, Still no idea for me when Andrew Luck's coming back. If they start playing more Marlon Mack over Frank Gore, I believe they can keep climbing a little bit because they are in a weak division, so they might be able to sneak out a few divisional wins, especially against the Titans and maybe the Jaguars. Not sure if they can beat the Texans with their offense. At number 25, we have the Bucks. They dropped one spot. The Buccaneers played well against the Patriots and almost won. They have a new kicker. And that's a major concern for me right there is the fact that you... I'm not going to say they lost the game because their kicker missed three field goals. The kicker missed three field goals and they lost the game. But say he made the first two, the Patriots wouldn't have just settled for a field goal in that last possession. They would have tried to score a touchdown. And if they did, boom, Patriots still win. And the field goal kicker missed one. But with the kicker problems that they have and have, have been having for the last two years, with Jameis Winston being a little more erratic, he's playing like Blake Bortles right now, so I'm going to have to put them down here. And all the injuries on defense seriously concerns me at this point. They have more, They it looks like to me they have more injury injuries on defense than most teammates have, back, than most teams have backups. The Titans at 24 next. They went down seven spots. Mariota injury is concerning, and their defense has been playing like dog shit. Their whole team is just... To me, it's like an engine that's not clicking. Like, you can hear it, like, trying to turn on, but it just doesn't start. To me, that's the Titans right now. Miami Dolphins, I begrudgingly, and I do say this with the most sincerity, put them up four spots. They did eke out a win over said Titans, so I put them a little bit ahead. Jay Cutler is playing terrible, less than 100 yards in back-to-back -back games, I believe. Even with Jarvis Landry... I don't know the extent of Devontae Parker's injury. I haven't looked it on that. I probably should have. Their defense is playing really well, though. So, their defense deserves to be up here or even higher. But their offense with Jay Cutler is just terrible. If they put Matt Moore in, 100%, they could, 
they'd be playing at least twice as better. But they're being stubborn because they signed Jay Cutler to a guaranteed contract, and now they have to play him. The Jets move up one to number 22. They're three and two, so putting them this low is kind of a struggle. But the teams they beat don't really shock me much at all. John Josh McCown has been playing really well. He's really the anchor of their offense. Anderson and McGuire are two surprising young players, one at receiver, one at running back. The Jets front seven, just like everyone knew. It's good at stopping the run. Not the best, but good. And Jamal Adams has been playing extremely well. Candidate for um, Rookie of the Year, I believe, or Defensive Rookie of the Year, at least for me. Then at number 21 and 20, respectively, same as last week, Redskins, Saints, they had, can't, they're coming off a bye week, so I didn't want to move them up. I didn't want to move them down too much. Even though people jumped ahead of them and moved behind them, I'm going to leave them right there just to see how they handle their upcoming games. At number 19, we have the Raiders. Derek Carr's injury and how their offense has been playing lately has been um very, very concerning because they did even before his injury, they got stymied for a couple of weeks. Marshawn Lynch hasn't been producing quite like I thought he would originally. Well, then again, I never thought he'd be a great running back in their system where he is so old. Their defense has been playing well, but it needs to step up if they're going to win the division or even have a chance of passing the Chiefs because the Chiefs are too good if the Raiders can't play defense. At number 18, we have the Cincinnati Bengals moving up seven spots. I think their offense has finally figured it out. They're going to get Joe Mixon the ball more. John Ross hasn't even played yet, really, I think. So once he gets out there, once Ifree gets healthy, A.J. Green gets out there. But at least for this week, they have A.J. Green, Joe Mixon, and Andy Dalton's been stepping up. So I appreciate that. Vontez Burfitt coming off suspension has been playing amazingly. And their secondary is still really good. So I believe, at least at this pace, with how the rest of their division has been playing, they're probably the favorites to win the AFC North if the Pittsburgh Steelers still struggle like they have been. At number 17, we have the Ravens going up two. they solid showing by their defense, and I believe they get Mitch Trubitsky this week, so they're a candidate for another gain again. At number 16, we have the Cowboys going into a bye week with a bad loss against the Packers. I know dropping them after a loss against the Packers this much doesn't seem quite fair, but it's just the way they keep losing. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. And until they can prove not to be that incompetent and to prove that their coaching isn't that bad, I'm just going to keep them right in the middle of the pack at 16. They are 2-3. and three, So their record does warrant it. The Vikings I have at 15. I have them staying where they are. Their defense is playing supremely well. And... Overall, I think it's just that they've gone up against a lot of tough offenses. Sam Bradford went down again, and they're still trying to figure out the Delvin Cook problem. But once they do, they should be in a pretty good position to win. Rams at number 14, dropping five spots after a tough loss to the Seahawks, where they really didn't compete at all in Goff, became Goff again. They should bounce back this week with Todd Gurley. Should be able to carry them again. Their defense should step up. Should be a good game. Jaguars at 13 went up three. They got the W in a tough game. Their defense played amazing. Five interceptions against Big Ben. Two pick sixes at the end of the game. Just crazy showing from the defense that warranted that jump alone. Texans went up two despite the loss against the Chiefs. I believe that Sean Watson played supremely well against that Chiefs defense. And the Texans... Defense, despite losing J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless, still played extremely well against the Chiefs. Maybe if those two didn't go down, the Texans might have snuck in and won that game, but it's hard to say what ifs. But right now, their concern is to replace Merciless and Watt on defense while still staying potent on offense. And at number 11, I have the Steelers. Yeah, big men threw five interceptions, but Antonio Brown had nearly 200 yards yet again. It's not only a matter of time until Le'Veon Bell figures out what's wrong with him and Big Ben figures out what's wrong with him. So I'm going to keep them right around the top 10 until then. The Bills drop five spots after a tough loss. 
Going into a bye week, though, they should be able to figure out what's wrong, get their offense clicking again. LaShawn McCoy is not the MVP candidate I thought he was at the beginning of the year, but still playing decent. Seahawks, with their tough performance, gained three spots up to number nine. Really impressed with how they've been playing. Their offense has been playing superb. Even without Jimmy Graham really showing up necessarily every week. They really need to figure out who's their featured back, though, on offense. Other than that, Doug Baldwin, Paul Richardson, all those wide receivers are enough on offense to where their de- amazingly Pro Bowl caliber defense, like everybody on their defense, could make a Pro Bowl. Sheldon Richardson, that new addition that they signed from the Jets or traded from the Jets, has been increasing his stock value for impending free agency every week. At number eight, we have the Patriots with a close win over the Bucks. I debated not moving them up too much, but uh, it basically would have been probably a flip-flop with the Bills because to me, 8, 9, 10 are very similar, especially with 7. I have the Patriots moving up here. I think their defense clicked a little bit. They're coming off a 10 days rest. Brady does have a AC joint sprain in his non-throwing shoulder, but against the Jets, they might be able to compensate in the game plan for that. And their defense should be able to handle the Jets' offense coming up. At number 7, we have the Lions. Should they have dropped more than this? Probably they did lose. But they lost a close game to the Panthers, who also only have one loss. So I didn't want to drop them too much for a loss against a good team. So I think number seven's where they belong right now. They're probably going to continue sliding, though. Especially with their upcoming schedule. It does not get any easier from here on out. And coming off the bye week, we have the Falcons moving up one spot. Mainly a product of the Bills and Lions dropping so much. But still, Falcons, good team. Coming off a bye week, they should be able to get the W this week. If not, they got a tough schedule coming up that I believe their offense and defense can easily overcome. Might lose one, two, two, three more games the rest of the year, honestly. Panthers at number five, moving up six spots. Would have moved them up higher, but I didn't see anything that warranted it necessarily. They beat the Lions, like I said, who were three and one, to move them to four and one. They're coming off of two good wins against the Patriots and Lions, number seven and eight in the power rankings. So putting them ahead of them is a no-brainer. But the four teams ahead of them, I can't quite see them beating head-to-head at least. But I see them contending easily. At number four, we have the Green Bay Packers. Nice good win against the Cowboys. Aaron Rodgers played really well. That game-winning drive, I do credit him for that. But I also say that shouldn't have happened because they called a bullshit call in the end zone against the Packers for a hit to a defenseless receiver, I believe, when all the guy did was hit Des Bryant's like shoulder with his forearm. Even though he pulled up, they still called it for whatever reason. Who knows? At number three, now, three and four, I could have moved the Packers up to three, but I didn't want to, like, say the Broncos are all of a sudden a lot worse. I believe if they put these guys head-to-head, the Broncos win because I believe the Broncos' defense can solve the Aaron Rodgers puzzle. But the Broncos are coming off a of bye week. I moved them up one. They weren't active. One of the only bye teams to actually move besides the Falcons. At number two and one, same as last week, Eagles Chiefs. Eagles are playing solid all-around football. Probably the best offense and defense combo in the league. I like what Wentz is doing. I like what the Eagles receivers are doing. And I like what the stable of running backs are doing as a whole. And their defense has been solid not many cracks in the defense and of course at number one we have the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs the only undefeated team in the league looking like the MVP quarterback rookie of the year running back and an amazing defense even without Eric Berry they've been playing incredible football you know guys don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next one peace